Hello everyone and welcome back to the New Hampshire Business Show. My name is Chris Pastrana and today we're here with Dan Reynolds and Chris Kahlo of Vulcan Creative. How's it going? Not too bad. Thanks for having us. Very good. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> so let's get into this a little bit. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourselves and then we'll move on to the business. Sure thing. Uh, so <laughs> my name is Chris and I am the creative director and I have uh, spent about 10, 15 years in the industry now. Yeah. And um, primarily focusing on a duality between uh, design as well as uh, software engineering. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So my name's Dan and I've been doing user experience design for about three years now. Um, I kind of started off in Bangkok because I was doing like some commercials and stuff for a while and I just needed to like make some real money like and not just like <laughs> wait for a commercial to come through every now and again. Um, so I got certified in Bangkok and I did like an internship with the UN and then um, contacted Chris. We went to high school together okay. and I kind of moved home and joined Vulcan. So mainly my thing is uh, user experience design, user interface design and uh, marketing okay. around, around that realm. Yeah. That's interesting because I remember when I first reached out because I knew about the, the creative side of it. Mm -hmm. So you said you were a software engineer? Yes, sir. Oh okay, yeah, so you actually like, again, do programming and all that mm -hmm. type of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, for many, many years now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my father was, uh, owned a printing company, mm -hmm. and I started with design um, when I was really, really young. And my mother uh, went to school for software engineering. Okay. And uh, she just kind of gave me all her textbooks when she was done, and <laughs> picked up both, kind of as I was growing up. That's pretty cool. But yeah, because that's what my, mom, my mom's a software engineer. She works for someone <laughs> but uh um, that's pretty cool that's why i like that i kind of i don't know pass it down <laughs> it's kind of cool that's awesome I did. so what type of stuff do you guys do build like what does vulcan do uh, primarily we do applications um like full-scale applications it could be both web and mobile um, for an example, with this last project that we did, we were out in California at the Anaheim Convention Center, which is why we had to push this up a little yeah. bit. Um, so there's a motivational speaker called Tom Ferry. He's just basically like a real estate coach, yeah. like Tony Robbins of real estate, pretty much. Okay. Um, so he put on this huge event at the Anaheim Convention Center where people buy tickets and attend. Um, but most of his audience can't attend because they're all over the country, obviously. Um, so basically, we built the platform that people can log in and watch it live. Mm -hmm. um, not only that is that they have an account that they can purchase, which is called Tom Ferry On Demand, mm -hmm. um, which is that they can watch video modules and lessons and all that all that fun stuff that he puts out there. Yeah, and they made some pretty decent coin off it. So, yeah. <laughs> but basically, That's we good. take a like an app from the very start. Um, like if someone pitches an idea to us, um, we go from there and. We're a lot different than other d studios where they mainly just do design or development. We kind of do everything. Yeah. So um, they come in and we can do the whole project from start to finish. So, okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So so you said start to finish, so I'm going to take it. It's, just, it's not a template. You're actually building a workable app. Yeah, okay. correct. And okay. it's catered to the client, right? That's so. really cool. That's like a big industry right now. Because yeah. everyone's moving into like mobile and For sure. having a mobile Having mobile ability is important for a lot of people. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And like Dan was saying, it's really rare to see design and engineering under the same roof. Yeah. Typically, you'd start with one and then pass it off to the other. And clients really like to, to know that there's some sort of unity in between it without having to be passing it around to a bunch of different outside firms. Yeah. So that's really helpful. Um, but yeah, in, in line with what Dan was saying about the, uh, the Tom Ferry project that we were just working on, it was really a... Uh, Really intensive, yeah. <laughs> um, especially since uh, we we again coded it from the ground up, designed it from the ground up, and in doing so, they had an audience of tens of thousands of people watching it at the the same time. Yeah. And programmatically, it had to be very very stable, especially since this is kind of the maiden voyage of the platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if there's even a second of downtime, I mean. Personally, we consider it a bit of a failure. Yeah. So they they have to be able to watch the stream from start to finish, and it's three days, eight hours each day. Oh wow! And you you just can't cut out at all. So it has to be able to handle people moving in and out of wireless hotspots and people's quality degrading and improving without wow. any sort of stalling or mm -hmm. yeah seizing up. And it went fairly well. Yeah. And it. yeah. And I think like. The best part of that application, personally, is that um, Chris actually custom built a player, and 
so it wasn't just like we got an out of the box solution to use like we built a player like around that platform yeah. that was able to give like <laughs> tons of metrics back to the client and like how much like just to give statistics about the player you said <laughs> faster than Netflix by how much? Uh, yeah, so the goal was to essentially emulate what Netflix does again in terms of quality degradation and um, okay. improving as people are watching it depending on their network speed uh, as well as how many people are playing games on the same network yeah. or actually working on it. Um, uh, so that that was one of the goals is to, to make sure that that happened. But also it the, the load time is comparable with again somebody like Netflix or YouTube. And uh, in we wrote it in all of four or five months. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it, it came up to be a significant, significantly larger program than um, we typically work on. Yeah. Um, considering just again how, how robust it had to be, but uh, it, I think it's impressive considering Netflix has billions of dollars at their disposal yeah. and thousands of engineers, and we were able to come up with something that's comparable. Yeah, that's really cool. That's impressive too. Yeah. Um, again I'm not good at any of this type of stuff just, <laughs> all I do is talk to people it's like literally all I'm good at <laughs> um, so it's kind of amusing to me because I would have no idea how to go about any of this so it's really cool and to think about the I mean even just me thinking about trying to get something to stream that well for you know thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of people watching at a single time like yeah I'm not even gonna get into how awful that would be if I tried it <laughs> yeah yeah it's frightening. Yeah. Yeah. I bet it was <laughs> That's the word for it. Frightening. Pretty, <laughs> pretty stressful, then, huh? Yeah. That's stressful, frightening. Uh, what else? Any adjective under those? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there yeah. were a lot of sleepless nights to me. Yeah. 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 That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, I know you've been in the industry for 10 years, you three. How long has Vulcan been? Vulcan. Vulcan? I quit my job at a print company mm -hmm. um, where I was building their, their um, software infrastructure yeah. as well as managing their um, their large format department so doing uh, graphic design printing posters mm -hmm. uh, I quit that almost five years ago now okay and uh, I think it was f it'll be five years in November okay so it's pretty at good. that point kind of floundered around for a little while picking <laughs> up um, freelance clients yeah and then Vulcan formed about a year later so okay nearly four years Okay, that's pretty cool. And in four years, you've gone from, I mean, so beginning to taking on very large projects like right. now. So it seems like you guys are doing pretty well and moving in a good direction. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, we tried, like, to grow, I think, like, from last year to this year. You said that we grew, like, 300% almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well. yeah, so we try to get that growth number per year. And if we keep going on track, we're going to be doing pretty well. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. Mean, those are... Those are big percentages. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we typically like to get like larger scale clients versus yeah. just like little small stuff. But like we like to get we like to work on these big types of projects. Um, not we, that we discount the small stuff at all, but like we want to go for like the big pie. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Is it now? I mean, looking in, I see this as a very competitive field because you just hear about it, talk about it a lot. Yeah. Is absolutely. it pretty competitive? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, it's very competitive. <laughs> yeah. Um, the problem at least in our opinion, uh, is that the market is, like you were saying, very saturated. Yeah. But it's not always saturated with quality. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So a lot of the time, people don't really know what approach to take. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, just common business sense is to go for the option that they think is going to get them there the best. Yeah. Or not necessarily the best, but the, the fastest to market. And uh, while that's good in some cases, typically you just wind up with so much technical debt that you could dump tens of thousands of dollars into something and then if it's not really really high quality because either somebody with less experience built it or somebody who cared a little bit less built it um they're just gonna have to do it all over again but then also pay the surplus tax for a stupid fee i guess you'd call yeah. it <laughs> yeah um to go back and do it again right yeah. so that thirty thousand dollars may be a waste and then you just have to spend 60 at the end of it yeah oh wow that's yep. pretty cool yeah um, yeah, and like I mentioned right at the beginning, I used to live in Bangkok and yeah. Chiang Mai and Thailand for about five years. Um, and with an oversaturated market, I think like the whole city of Chiang Mai is just like people that moved there to be like quote unquote digital nomads. Yeah. Um, I think they have like a year of experience in like software development and stuff. Yeah. And like pretty much all of them end up having to go home because like they just jump into something that they're not ready to get into and end up getting 
whatever client that they get and overpromise, like pretty upset with them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of competition, um, but what sets us apart from them is that like when we do develop a project, our work speaks for itself, mm -hmm. um, and that especially from going all scale design and development that yeah. we're with the client every step of the way. Yeah. Um, so we are confident in our ability to get past like that huge saturated market. Um, Cause just in a sea of crap, like we stand out, you know what I mean? Which is good. Yeah. And not to be so blunt to about see. it, but yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you're both, I'm assuming fairly young twenties, thirties, 26. Yeah, 26. 26 as well. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are younger than I am. He's nine days good. older than I am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. So Five days older, sorry. Born in the ninth. <laughs> Who's counting? <laughs> yeah, apparently. So you're younger, working in the tech industry, and you guys are doing well. That's good to see. Yeah. Thank you. You guys get a lot of pushback from like older clients because you're younger, or is it kind of okay because you're in tech and they expect it? Did at the start. Okay. Um, I've been saying I was 25 since I was about 18. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, fortunately, I've been pretty much the same height and build since then, so yeah, yeah. it kind of kind of works well. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there there is a little bit of ageism um, towards the the younger generation when you're first starting off. Yeah. Uh, particularly, uh, just because they they have to put their whole business. Uh, in, in, in kind of in your hands, mm -hmm. they have to really, really be able to trust you. And if they don't think that you can bring as much to the table as you need to bring, or put as many hours in, or you have other commitments, or you're just kind of flighty, <laughs> yeah. um, then there, there's certainly is some pushback. However, uh, since we've developed kind of a, a, a good repertoire of uh, work in our portfolio, yeah. and um, been able to put some code samples out, and actually build a show finished products that has been completely um, uh, yeah. eliminated over the past, I'd say, three to four years since Vulcan was in its infancy. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't recommend freelancing as a 20-something-year-old, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's tough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you definitely want to have your own, you know, your own project, something right. you want, you know, yeah. your name. Correct. So freelancing is kind of, you know, yeah. cheap. There's a, yeah, there's a lot more respect to, like, an actual business, like, yeah. when Vulcan, instead of just, like, being Dan Reynolds, the 26-year-old freelancer, yeah. like, <laughs> working for Vulcan Creative, like, gets you a lot more yeah. respect in that era. Yeah. Hey, don't get me wrong, we love freelancers. Yeah. I mean, without freelancers, we probably wouldn't be where we are right now. But, um, or, I'm sorry, we certainly wouldn't be where we are right now. Yeah. Uh, just because they... We we have a regular repertoire of people that we we reach out to help with either people we met in school yeah. or uh, I mean and they're just great. Yeah. However, uh, I don't envy their position <laughs> at all. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Absolutely, that's pretty funny. Now, as freelancers, you reach out just kind of like to fill gaps and things you need. I'm taking it like manpower and all that stuff. Kind of, sort of. Uh, we have a f about well, I want to say four or five people that we are regularly. Uh, that are in our office on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we both went to, to art schools in obviously different countries for short periods of time. And uh, in doing so, we met met people that can kind of pick up the pieces where either we don't have the time to do or it's just not really our forte. Uh, we tend to make sure that if we're going to take on a project or if we're going to work on something or better yet hire somebody else to do it, we at least have the experience to do it on our own in the event that either A, we can't find somebody to do it, yeah. or B, we just have to do it on our own, or yeah. ideally time allows for yeah. us to do it on our own. Yeah. Uh, but and it goes back to the oversaturated market. C, sometimes we hire the wrong person and this doesn't work out. We gotta yeah. do it anyway. Correct. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that does happen sometimes, but yep. a, a good amount of the time, uh, the people that we do know that we work with, uh, they help, again, fill in the gaps uh, where just either we might be lacking in terms of time or ability yeah. or um, they, they're, they're really helpful. Yeah. In, in Fortunately, we got to a point where we have trusted outside freelancers that mm. we use. Okay. Um, so you know their work, you know they're good. Yeah. We'll yeah. go with them. Yeah, Correct. it takes a little while to get to that point, though. <laughs> you know? yeah. As an example, uh, we're not the best photographers by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Um, partly because it's expensive to get into and yeah. then secondly, it's just kind of taking a back burner in our personal skill set. Yeah. Um, but uh, we, we work often with local photographers, and they are very, very helpful to us. Right, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, like Dan was saying, it's everybody wants to be a photographer, yeah. at least when you're coming out of art school. I mean, I think it's like 70 to 30 
um, seventy percent of the people want to be photographers, whereas like thirty percent want to do the the illustration in the trenches in the yeah. office all day mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, I ran into that when I first started when um, I hired on a videographer mm-hmm. to you know do some work for us and shoot some commercials and stuff. And oh, that was that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things like that everyone wants to be a photographer. Everyone thinks that they're worth hundreds of dollars an hour to mm-hmm. shoot commercial when in the end oftentimes they don't hold up to that quality right so yeah i, I totally understand that pain yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh, like we're also like a believer too when we do take freelancers is that we we do pay them a very fair rate if mm-hmm. they can you know do the job yeah. um because so much in a freelance market too is just like it's everyone's just getting stiffed left and right, left and right. <laughs> and like, it gets very, very frustrating as a freelancer. Yeah. So we want to make sure like the freelancers that we do bring on want to work with us yeah. because we pay them fairly. And num- number two, it's if they have quality work, we're just going to keep giving them jobs. So yeah, yeah. Not exactly. Only that, but paying them on time. Yeah. But yeah, that's a big one too. <laughs> yeah. And making yeah. sure that, you know, we're not going to just have them one day and then move on to somebody else the next. Right. Yeah. We like to form quality relationships with them and I guess Falcon safe haven esque kind of thing yeah that's pretty good yeah and you're right it's a good relationship to build um they trust you you trust them for sure it just it's beneficial all around you know mm-hmm. so that's pretty good mm-hmm. so okay so let's get into something that was kind of interesting um so since you guys do mobile you know web app stuff like that i get a lot of questions from people who either are looking for people who can build custom apps because mm-hmm. i've heard that a few times mm-hmm. when should someone actually consider moving to a custom <laughs> instead of finding something a little more generic on their end. Uh, are we talking in terms of like an iPhone app? Sure. Uh, I'm, again, you guys would know way more sure. nuances yeah. than I would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those are um, typically, uh, let's just use that as an example because everybody has an app idea. Yeah. Right. Uh, so oftentimes people come into it and uh, it will, we'll get five to ten questions a, a week probably mm-hmm. just hey i have this app idea would you be able to go ahead and build it for me Which and of course mm-hmm. our first question is is can we meet up and discuss the details yeah mm-hmm. and uh what is what does your release strategy look like yeah. so in terms of release strategy how often how, how soon do you want to get to market and what kind of budget can you back it with yeah right exactly. and typically that's where the conversation ends <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, I have to pay for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh. Yeah. It's and they offer us uh, like they're just like well we can partner up but they don't realize how long it's actually going to take to build yeah. and like we can't live off the promise that it might yeah. do good and yeah. um correct we've been doing this long enough to know when an app idea is really good and when an app idea is just not so good yeah. but like I mean like Chris said everyone has an app idea and everyone thinks it's going to be the next big thing mm-hmm. um. So we try to weed through that by working with like companies that like yeah. actually have like either a marketing budget or like some sort of funding already ready. Mm-hmm. Um, so we typically more toward go more towards like businesses that have like a full department that would, would need some outside help than like just um, somebody that has an app idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We often end up liking to work with marketing directors and marketing managers, just yeah. because not only do they have the resources available in order to, to come up with that, but they have the experience to know that if you're going to say no, it's going to be okay. <laughs> um, just because a lot of the time, if you tell these people no, they get a little bit upset with the fact that uh, I mean, it was a good idea, but nobody's going to help me with it. Um, yeah. So to to bring it around full circle, I guess, and answer your question. Uh, unless you have the the um, real, real determination, desire to be able to back a project like that, you should probably start on your own first until it's you know functional and profitable. And then in turn, uh, take it to somebody who's capable of building it out full scale, okay. making it a quality product that people really, really want to use and uh, fortify the user base some. Okay, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. Um, what was I gonna say? So it, when we were talking about it, said, like custom apps can be costly. I'm gonna take it that way. Uh, the it whole it process depends on the application, but yeah, generally. yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Especially if it's months and months and months. And yeah, it's it's yeah. just all about like how much time are we gonna have to put yeah. into it, um, and it all depends on what needs to go into the app, right? Yeah. So it's the the cost just varies, and that's where that initial sit down comes in, mm-hmm. where it's just like, what exactly do you want it to do? Like, who you want to reach, how much time do you want to take, 
and so we get all the details with like the initial consultation first before we give them a quote. Okay. Yeah. There you go. I like it. Yep. Pretty cool. Anyway, so we're getting closer to the end here. Um, people that want to learn more, um, reach out, talk. Maybe they actually want to schedule something. How mm -hmm. do they get in touch with you? Um, you can get to our Facebook, which is Vulcan Creative. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we have our Dribble, which is. Do you know what Dribble is? No. Okay, so <laughs> it's basically a social media site for designers. Okay. Um, and it's D R I B B B L E slash Vulcan Creative. Um, but and we have Instagram Vulcan underscore Creative. Okay. Um, right now Vulcan we're putting creative it underscore Vulcan Creative underscore. <laughs> sorry. And like uh, right now we just wrapped up another project, so we're building out the case study for that. And so our website's going to be live within nice. the week or two. Which nice. cool. do we get a domain for that? Yep. What what is it? Uh, well, it'll be. Just check our Facebook. <laughs> just check our Facebook. <laughs> okay, <cool. laughs> um, I think actually you can direct to our Dribble account um, just from our current domain name, which is Vulcan, V-U-L-C-A-N-C-A dot com. Okay. Yeah, and that goes to the Dribble for now, and our site's going to be up live mm -hmm. within a week. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. So is there anything else you guys want to go over before we head on up? Anything we missed? Anything you think is important? Um, did you want to know what our typical project looks like from start to finish? Sure. Let's jump into that. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, so let's use uh, another one that we just wrapped up as mm -hmm. an example. Uh, so we were working with Homeworks Energy in Boston, and well, technically Medford, just right outside Boston. <laughs> and uh, they are, are you familiar with the Mass Safe program? I've heard of it. Do you live in New Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah, that's, we didn't hear about it until we started working with them either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what it is is uh, basically there's a few cents taken out of every uh, Massachusetts taxpayer, and mm -hmm. actually New York now as well, their, uh, their utility bills. Mm -hmm. And it is put towards the Mass Save program in which uh, various companies can uh, basically uh, lobby for uh, uh, with with the program to uh, be able to go out and uh, take take contracts for reducing energy costs in residential areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so Homeworks Energy is actually the largest of these companies. Uh, I mean, their name pretty much coincides with the Mass Save name at this point. Yeah, and uh, what will happen is is that somebody will request a um, energy assessment with them and uh, they'll come out and they'll replace all of the their light bulbs in somebody's house for free um, was it low flow shower heads yeah uh, es essentially just like making that. the house more energy efficient okay, um, to obviously save the consumer more money in the long run um, mm. as and everything's leaning in of course more green so it's right. it's a win 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 for everybody mm. and at the end of the day I mean it's basically free to the the applicant because it's already taken out in that that very small tax percentage and I mean they, like Dan said it's a huge win to the the people and it mm -hmm. makes sense for the company so why not make it happen yeah. Uh, but yeah we just uh, did a good portion of their branding we helped out okay. with their their website uh, yeah we, we did like a full-scale redesign for them mm -hmm. yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, built their site from the ground up and uh, that just went live this past week mm -hmm. yep and, and energy uh, com check it out <laughs> <laughs> and uh the start of that project was so this one had a bit of a compressed deadline but we started about six weeks ago okay and for a large company like that um they have something like 200 employees i want right. to say yeah and um that that they, they really needed a new site right away. So uh, we hmm. <laughs> we put every hour that we had into making it so that they had that available to them. And uh, in order to, to make that happen, I, I think Dan might have mentioned earlier, maybe it was before we uh, we started talking, yeah. that, um, that the project typically begins with working on the, the overall, um, I guess you'd call it just brand aesthetic. Yeah. And, uh, that, that involved just tuning up the logo a little bit, uh, making sure that we got all the necessary research together in order to know what their ideal clientele looks like, uh, who they want to be able to reach out to and how they want to reach out to them. And uh, from there, after we've spent, what was it, probably about a week or so? Yeah, a good week takes details. into like user research, knowing exactly what they want, who they're going to reach, how we're going to reach them, what exactly is the goal of the site, which is scheduling your assessment and everything. Um, from there, we take all that information, start sketching it out about how it's actually going to work, right? Um, yeah. So we uh, that's like where I kind of come in, where it's like UX, uh, which is user experience. It's okay. just basically how someone's going to navigate a site or an application. Um, you see it in everything. Yeah. Um, 
Like, for an example, like, a bad case of it was, like, when Snapchat made over the Switch and everyone was so mad that, like, Snapchat... So, like, <laughs> um, and that just goes in from experience and, like, A-B testing and, like, knowing exactly what the user's going to want and what the company yeah. wants from the user. Um, so, from there, um, I designed it out in Sketch, um, first on paper, and then I translated it over to a program called Sketch. Um, and then we present that to the client. And this is just very basic, like gray blocks and yeah. just getting the point across. So like we don't put too much color into it yet because we don't want them to get distracted from like the color and the aesthetic of it yet. We want like functionality first. Like yeah. this is exactly what's gonna happen. Um, once we get approval for that, um, that's like kind of when we like slap a coat of paint on it, put all the photos, illustrations in and color and that sort of thing. Um, when that's approved, we go on to development. Okay. Yeah. Slap a coat of paint on it. It's a little bit minimalistic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Detail slap a coat of paint on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a good deal of asset curation um, as well as asset creation. So we'll, we'll source a ton of photography, um, videography from the client as well as uh, work hand in hand and then with the coming up with the copy. Uh, so any of the any of the text that has to be utilized for the user interface itself, navigation and what have you, as well as uh, the actual marketing copy. And uh, then from there, we can pretty much solidify the design in terms of a final product. And that ultimately ends up looking what it would look like when it's actually deployed minus the functionality. And once we reach that phase, we can start building in the, the technical components to it. So hmm. wireframing, um, which is like a pre-designed phase, that's on, on most projects, uh, typically a few weeks, this one included. Uh, design, same thing. Um, and then development, pretty much just matches up one-to-one -one with both of those design phases. Okay. And uh, that is the lengthiest, just because we usually end up targeting so many platforms, as well as making it as uh, reliable as possible, so mm -hmm. that people with older devices can utilize it well, yeah. and um, it, it works well for the, the general audience. And then we do sure. a ton of testing there afterwards. Uh, and it's pretty much it. Um, it typically works that way for any project that we're doing, actually. We start with a, the low fidelity pass, then move on to a high fidelity pass, and then actually round it all together. Um, so whether we're working on somebody's brand, um, so their, their logos and what have you, building into a brand book would be the final step. Okay. And uh, if we were working on just a poster design, it would be gray blocks to final design to actually sending it over to the printer, which we'd help with. Nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And yeah, and you pretty much covered it. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, yeah. cool. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. This has been a lot of fun. Thank Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. You guys are way smarter than I am, so I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't <doubt> that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. That's going to be it for today. If anyone needs anything, reach on out. And I'll see you all next time. Awesome. <laughs>